us, limiting European architecture's identity, it's sort of too broad. And for us being in Norway, the Norwegian circumstance is very particular. So uh, I think it's difficult to say that uh, European architecture has one identity. I think in many ways it has several identities. And for us, it's interesting to understand what is specific about Norwegian architecture and what is specific about Spanish architecture. In a way, when we have been traveling in Asia and seeing <clears throat> how people look to Europe for the, when they design, we, in a way, we also see the same in Norway. We want, uh, we are often looking to Spain or France when we are designing. And, and in a way, we, I would like more and more to have find back the, the real Norwegian identity more than the European identity. I also think that uh, a lot of the, arc the European architecture is based on historical works and a lot of the more contemporary architecture is more global in, in many ways. So I think a lot of um, other nations look to Europe to see the roots of classical architecture without necessarily that being the best inspiration for um, our modern challenges. City planners in Norway are often looking to the European um, cities like, like Madrid, Paris, uh, Berlin to find inspiration of how to create good city environments. And, and in that sense, the, the European cities, I, I think, have a very strong identity. Pulling back to the idea of Europe being a lot of different cultures sort of squashed together and that makes the identity of it. If you squash it too tightly, it, it becomes mud, you know, and everything looks the same. And for, for me, I think that's a loss of the European identity, uh, for the European identity. I think we need all these different kinds of identity based on local values and, and ideas. The price uh, has been quite uh, interesting in the selection. So a lot of the works, like the small scale works, uh, as like our work and also the student works that has been lifted as something good. I think that's a, that's something that identifies the movements in the younger uh, architects in Europe now. And somebody needs to um, recognize these younger initiatives to make them more valid in this bigger discussion. And for me, that's a powerful tool that the prize can be. When you give a prize to architecture that is in some way outstanding, I think the, it should reflect not only quality, but also content, like something meaningful. And it, it should have a story to convey to other architects and other people working with architecture, that it's not only a good solution but it's sort of a, a better solution, something more than you would expect. Trondheim is presented with architecture that also is based on older traditions. Like we have this uh, low, like small scale wooden architecture in the city center that is really interesting and striking. And I think it's interesting not only because it's old, but also because it it tells a story about where we came from and also where we're heading, the use of wood and, and uh, the small scale, like not being over ambitious in, in some sense and, and down to earth. I think that's good qualities of Trondheim. And it is reflected in a lot of the architecture in the city center. Some, perhaps something that, that uh, makes Trondheim unique is, the, is all the small wooden houses. And they are, they, they definitely have, that's, that's perhaps the identity of the city uh, and, and of Norway. It's, uh, it's all of these uh, timber log houses that are um, from uh, starting from the, from the 1600s and uh, until maybe 100 years ago. And also we, we see that some of the contemporary architects in Norway, they try to figure out how to use wood in your buildings, also in the in the more urban situation, like we have a new uh, building in uh, a place called Borkeplassen in, in the city center, which is a three or four story building in, in massive wood construction. And it shows that there is use of wood in modern houses and it can be something also for the future. 
Uh, and I think that's an interesting movement that should be lifted as, as something good. One interesting area that Trondheim has seen the last 20 years is uh, the old harbour area has been refurbished into a shopping and an eating and restaurant area. And suddenly we have seen that some of the qualities of the the street life in more like southern European cities is coming to Trondheim. And I think that Solsiden is the area and it's become a very uh, like lively area with, with a lot of uh, more urban situations. And, and that's interesting to see because it's not based on architecture in s specific architecture, but a structure for people to use the city. Mm -hmm.